Hello, I'm Julie Venners with the Lupus Foundation of America Research Update. The American College of Rheumatology held its annual scientific meeting recently in Philadelphia. Lupus Foundation of America representatives were there, along with more than 11,000 scientific participants. It's the world's largest gathering of rheumatologists and allied health professionals. The program included many scientific sessions, during which researchers presented results of their studies and fielded questions from peers. The give and take is part of the rigorous process to ensure that each study can stand up to scientific scrutiny. In addition to live presentation sessions, results from studies also were discussed at daily poster sessions. During the poster sessions, the investigator and interested conference participants were able to engage in a more in-depth, two-way discussion. In all, more than 260 abstracts of lupus research studies were presented during the six-day meeting. The large number of studies reflects the building momentum for scientific discovery in lupus, and the Lupus Foundation of America is pleased to provide video highlights from the event, so you can share in the exciting news from this year's meeting. During the conference, the Lupus Foundation of America also met with its medical and corporate advisors to discuss the future direction of research on lupus and to review recommendations from an important new report on barriers to lupus drug development. Commissioned by the LFA and issued by the Lewin Group, a respected national healthcare consulting firm, the report includes recommendations for the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, National Institutes of Health, researchers from academia, the LFA, and industry to implement a range of initiatives to create a path toward developing a robust arsenal of safe, effective, and more tolerable treatments for lupus. The Lewin Report culminates a nine-month study that included convening a panel of 40 international lupus experts and thought leaders from government, industry, and the scientific community. Members of the Medical Council also were briefed on the LFA Collective Data Analysis Initiative and outgrowth of the International Panel Meeting. Dr. Kenneth Kalunian of the University of California, San Diego, is heading up the initiative for the LFA to advance knowledge of lupus and optimize clinical trial design by researching data from previous and existing lupus clinical trials. Later that evening, the LFA presented the Evelyn V. Hess Research Award to Dr. Murray Urowitz of the University of Toronto, recognizing his lifetime achievement in lupus research. Uh, my research is really called uh, clinical practice research. Therefore, everything res revolves around the patient. My research would not happen if the patient wouldn't uh, be a participant in that research. And uh, so I collect data on patients who come in, whether they're ill or not ill, and that's allowed us to describe some very important uh, issues in, in patients with lupus that have actually changed the practice in the field. So the patient is key, and so the fact that a patient advocate group would recognize that type of research was extremely meaningful to me. So I'm delighted to have, to have been given this award. Dr. Evelyn Hess was on hand for the award presentation. An internationally respected expert in lupus, Dr. Hess chaired the LFA's Medical Scientific Advisory Council for more than 15 years. The LFA also bestowed the inaugural Dr. Mary Betty Stevens Young Investigator Award to Dr. Karen H. Kostenbader of the Brigham and Women's Hospital at Harvard University. The award recognizes Dr. Kostenbader's early achievements as an investigator in lupus research. I'm a clinical investigator in epidemiology just in lupus research, so my research so far has um, examined different risk factors for developing lupus because we really don't know what causes lupus and I think the picture is becoming more clear. Um, we know that certain risk factors, we know that cigarette smoking, um, current cigarette smoking is a risk factor for developing lupus. We know that probably oral contraceptive use and postmenopausal hormone use um, and early age at the onset of menarche. Um, are, do increase the risk of developing lupus as well, so reproductive factors. I've looked at environmental exposures, um, been involved in uh, studies in urban neighborhoods in Boston, looking at silica exposure and solvent exposure, and silica exposure we know is ex associated with an increased risk of developing lupus as well. A popular destination for ACR meeting participants is the Exhibit Hall, where companies and organizations provide information about products and services to help doctors meet the needs of their patients. And the Lupus Foundation of America was there too. Staff and volunteers of LFA's Philadelphia Tri-State Chapter provided samples of LFA's lupus education materials and informed health professionals of resources in their communities to help people with lupus. 
During the conference, the LFA interviewed 22 lupus researchers about their studies. We have prepared video reports highlighting research on new treatments, the impact of lupus on the body, possible causes of lupus, and how lupus affects different groups. We hope that you find these updates helpful and will share them with your family and friends. Feel free to email your comments to webmaster at lupus.org. And thanks for watching.